pretty underneath. Yeah, see, I wouldn't kill people for myself, but I probably would for my children. I'll be honest. I mean, I might start roasting people. I'm being sarcastic, folks. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> We're going to have a totally jam-packed final 30 minutes here in the next segment. Mike Adams pops in for about 10 minutes, and I'm going to premiere um, the footage they shot of the police. Um, tell them they couldn't go in the building there in Roswell, Georgia. Uh, and some other incredible news. Uh, so much of it we never even get to on the air. It's all at InfoWars.com. Uh, and prisonplanet.com. In fact, the featured news is coming in so fast. I'm going to add a link saying top stories at the top of the site so that all the articles we're writing and the research goes there so people start clicking on that. Another thing is infowars.com forward slash feed. That's the RSS feed. That gets a lot of stuff that rolls off. We just got to re-engineer the site because there's so much information up there. And so many times an incredible article just, just, just uh, goes away. Uh, Mr. Rawls, we were talking during the break and you were uh, discussing the IRA versus an American resistance and the difference is firearms. Briefly tell folks about that. Sure. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, in the peace process in Northern Ireland uh, a few years back, it all came down to just a few hundred guns when they were trying to decommission the IRA units. And we're talking two or three hundred guns was, was all that it took to hold up the peace process. Here, by contrast, in the United States, we have millions of guns. In fact, million, more than a million are being sold every month in the United States going into private hands. I've seen so, numbers of over 5 million guns yeah, sold yeah, it's, per month. Yeah, it's a huge, huge number of guns. Uh, it's absolutely impossible to disarm the American people. And, and any globalist who has some fantasy of disarming the American people is, is absolutely deluded. It's never going to happen. Even if 95% of, or 98% of our population foolishly turned in their guns, there still would be more than enough guns to engage in a war of resistance here in the United States. So well, let's say there's 200. My concern. Let's say there's 200 million new guns. I mean, the last 20 years or so, but really, it's more like 400 million. They estimate good working guns out there. Right. And let's say there's 160 million gun owners. It's growing. Let's say 1% decides to fight. Uh, we're talking about. What is that, a million, 600,000 people? Yeah, uh, that's, and that's four times the size of our military. I mean, it, the, the numbers would be totally lopsided. And it, uh, for a guerrilla warfare situation, you don't even have to fight at a one-to-one -one ratio. So um, it, there's absolutely no way that, and I, and I describe this in my novel Patriots and in its sequel, Survivors, there's no way that the American people could ever be disarmed and even if there is an attempt to disarm them, they'll. they'll I was start about to a say war that can't be won. It'll be a, a, a guerrilla war that um, there's only one logical conclusion, one inevitable conclusion. That is that our constitutional re republic will be restored. Well, the enemy's using psyops instead, but but that's not working anymore. Congress has a nine percent approval rating, and I don't ever want it to go to this. But let's say they arrest Alex Jones, disappear me. You know, it's a hardcore tyranny. All this just continues. They start trying to come and pick people up. If you've got one percent, and it's going to be way more than that, I, I think it'll probably be ten percent of gun owners at, at some point will resist. But if one percent, a million six hundred thousand, went out and simply went after one bad guy. And then never were seen again. Uh, you know, boom. Uh, you're talking about Mark Corney, he uses the moose hunting license. You have to get in a lottery just to maybe get the moose hunting license. It's, <laughs> it, it's not like, my point is they always show the military all these weapons. Most of the military I talk to are, are awake and on our side more than the general public. And so this idea of, oh, we can't fight the government if it comes to that. I don't want that because the globalists will sit offshore and, you know, let the civil war drag on. I would rather, with the truth, psyop them and get them to join reality. But if the system goes to some Soviet Russia type deal, this is not going to be like the NKVD and nobody would stand up to them. And Alexander Schultz and Nietzsche uh, bemoan that. Yes, uh, we have a, a different situation here in the States. Um, again, if, if a, a guerrilla war situation ever develops, um, God help any, anyone who tries to enforce it on enforce tyranny on the United States. It won't last long. Yeah, the system set up all the tyranny now. They're just not fully implementing. They're kind of like waiting at the edge of a cliff. Yeah, the, the, the bureaucratic approach, the incremental approach, 
seems to have been working for them. But if they try to implement anything in a hurry, it'll, it'll be a huge backlash. But that's the issue. Even the incremental at a certain point hits a flashpoint, and it's coming to that. I think we are approaching it, yes. Well, I'm, I'll be praying for all your listeners, Alex, that uh, they put themselves in the right place at the right time with the right people. And yeah, we didn't even get to many of the calls. Uh, promise us in the next month or so you'll come back and just take calls. Okay, I'll be happy to. Let me say bye to you in the break. Folks, get his book at InfoWars.com or at bookstores everywhere. Survivors, a novel of the coming collapse. Uh, great to give this to friends and family to get them thinking. Available at InfoWars.com or SurvivalBlog.com. We'll be right back with Mike Adams and more. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we are here. Back weeknights, of course, with InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock every evening. I'm going to have some special reports tonight. And Aaron Dykes is also going to be on the show. And we have um, some of the Oklahoma City investigators there with April 19th coming up, the date of the um, United Nations globalist bombing so they could demonize the American people. Uh, just a brief interview now, breaking news at naturalnews.com. It's also one of the top stories at infowars.com. And that is Michigan government unleashes armed raids on small pig farmers, forces farmer to shoot all his own pigs, saying they're an invasive species. And they wrote it where they said black hair, brown hair, red hair, or any other trait they say can be connected to being feral, they kill them. Well, all pigs, if they get out over time, grow longer hair and tusk. It's all the same thing. Uh, and this is a new way to shut down small farms and ranches. And the UN said they'll do this. They're going to start, they're saying dogs and cats are invasive. Uh, so without warrants, they did this. It's amazing. Joining us uh, from his evil farm uh, is Mike Adams, the health ranger. Mike, uh, we were conspiracy theorists saying the law read they were going to send armed people out without warrants and kill pigs and arrest people. But it's, it's, it's now beginning. Uh, instead of stopping the feral pigs that have been out there for 100 years, they're saying pigs and pens are bad. Government uses any crisis for a power grab. Mike Adams. Yeah, one week ago, Alex, we had uh, Mark Baker on, on your show. He was one of the featured guests, and he described what was happening there in Michigan. And I, I remember seeing some of the comments. People said, oh, this can't be true. It's a conspiracy theory. Well, as it has happened in the last couple of days, just over the weekend, the DNR, that's the Department of Natural Resources in Michigan, has conducted two armed raids. Now, they left alone Mark Baker because he was willing to speak out and because he said, I'll be waiting for you. And he was waiting for them. So they selectively targeted the weak and the helpless. In this case, senior citizen farmers, a man who's about 65 years old, they targeted his farm. And he has a worker who's 75 years old who they interrogated. They brought in six vehicles, 10 men with guns to conduct this raid. And in anticipation of that raid happening, one of these farmers had to go through the heart-wrenching activity of putting a bullet through the heads of his own pigs in order to avoid being arrested as a felon before the DNR arrived. So what we have now, Alex, let me give you the names and the facts of this case. In Kalkaska County, one raid conducted at Fife Lake is the town name. Uh, the rancher there is Dave Tuxbury. Another raid in Sheboygan County at Renegade Ranch. Ron McKendrick was the victim farmer targeted there by the DNR. He is going to appear in court this Friday. There's a hearing in Sheboygan County. And all those listening who can attend and help support this are invited to come there. At 9 a.m., there's going to be a, a court hearing. And he's going to present a legal strategy to try to... Uh, to fight back against this total outrageous tyranny, something that I'm calling domestic terrorism by Michigan government thugs. These people need to be arrested, Alex. That's what's happening in Michigan today. That's right, and that's what they said in the law. They said felony charges, arrest, huge fines, and we'll come on without warrants and kill them. So instead they just said, we're going to be nice. Kill your pigs and we won't arrest you. And again, I, I read the law on air weeks ago. It said any characteristic... Uh, that we say, even if it's not recognized as, quote, being feral. And they say black spots, brown hair, red hair. I mean, there are hundreds of breeds of pig that look like that. You see them, at, I took my kids to the livestock show that were pigs with black hair, pigs with red hair. And, and, and of course, these wild pigs get out breed, but it's not the people who have pigs that they say might have characteristics of a feral hog that are causing the problem. I mean, this is so amazing how there is a feral hog problem across the country. But instead of saying, hey, folks, you see feral hogs, kill them. 
having a public service announcement. Instead, they just say it, it makes you a crime. You know, they can't find enough folks to bust for illegal drugs the government ships in. So now it's your invasive pig or it's your, your animal ID, your premises ID. This is, but remember, Mike, we were wrong to warn of this, but now it's happening. It's absolutely happening. Remember, a feral pig is merely a, fig, uh, a pig outside the fence. So these pigs were inside the fence. They were domesticated. They were livestock. They've been raised year after year for a long time. So now we have the state of Michigan criminalizing livestock. They are a gang of unindicted criminals running loose with guns across the state of Michigan, forcing farmers to murder their own livestock. And there's no indication that they're only going to stop with pigs. They could do this with birds, with chickens, with certain types of cows, with goats. They could just add to their list and go around murdering, just slaughtering animals all yeah, across let the me, state. Let me explain this for the people who don't understand farming the 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 beautiful texas longhorn is really a three thousand year old they think it goes back even before the romans but at least two thousand year old roman breed of cow bovine that was then brought into spain by the romans the spanish then 500 years ago just like horses brought them in they went wild like mustang horses that are identical to you know regular breed of horses you can ca capture them domesticate them breed them make great work horses some of the best uh, you know great uh, uh, range horses for riding fence that is called an invasive species because it's a feral cow they're actually uh, pretty well behaved and, and, and a good breed to have, very handsome as well. The point is, and, and, and they can live on scrub brush, a very hardy cow. It's a sp Spanish cow, but it even goes back to the Romans, like the bull mastiff dog. They take pigs that were, that were domesticated, they get out, they're wild, and now they're saying, if your pigs look like what wild pigs look like, we're going to kill them. And then the guy who goes on your show, my show, when you were sitting in, they raid him. They picked him as an example. That's the breaking news here, Mike. No, uh, uh, correction there. They avoided him. They raided other farmers who they saw as more vulnerable who weren't speaking okay, out. I was confused then. I thought you were saying it was the same guy. Oh, no, he was I the guy warning about it. Right, I may have misspoke. Mark Baker at bakersgreenacres.com, he was left alone because he said, we're waiting for you. And he went public and he filmed the video with his family and the farm and everything. So the DNR wouldn't touch him. Instead, they went after uh, other friends in the industry who are also raising pigs who they saw as defenseless. So the, another legal tactic that they used, Alex, is the, the state DNR officials could not get a warrant in the counties where the farms existed. So they got warrants in other counties and then used that as a, an unconstitutional justification to come in and trespass on their property to violate their Fourth Amendment rights and then force them to make sure that they would slaughtered their own pigs in order to avoid being arrested as felons. This is, this is outrageous, Alex. This is the end of, of basic fundamental farming freedom in Michigan. We've got to stand up to this, and that's why I've called for the public arrest of these DNR officials. We've got to have a, a citizen's posse out there arresting these tyrants. Well, bottom line, now, um, we've got our East Texas property. We lease it out for some deer hunting, and in, in, in my dad's entire life, he's never seen federally funded task forces of game wardens spilling onto our property and being very bossy uh, and and 